Expanding two decades of business, entertainment, and government. It's Business This Week with Saul Mejia. Now from the studios at Zolan Radio, KROJ 101.5. Here's your host, Saul Mejia. Hey, good afternoon. This afternoon we are with Jorge Mendes Barcelo, president of BNO Business and Tax Consultants. He's also a member of the Panama City Chamber of Commerce. And we had a talk not too long ago, a couple of days back, we had a talk and we discovered that we have a lot of things in common, including the fact that we both speak French. We speak French. Yes, All right. So uh, we just wanted, to, I thought he had a quite an interesting story. So we wanted to share his story with the rest of the people that, you know, they're watching. We think it's pretty amazing and we want to inspire other people to grow up to be like this young man. He's young, but he already got so much done that I thought it would be an interesting content. So I'm going to start by asking the first question. Where are you from? I am from Sonora, Mexico. And when did you arrive to the United States? I arrived uh, 2007, June 2007 when I was 15. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And what high school did you go to? I went to James Monroe High School here in North Hills. Ah, so did I. So I think it's awesome. Huh. How long did it took for you to learn how to speak English? Uh, about six months. I would attend adult school and Saturday school. Hey, you know what? It actually took me exactly six months to learn <laughs> for, for myself to learn. You know, and it was through um, actually my friends. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, was it hard to when you try to attend to college? Was it pretty hard for you to try to go to college? The hardest part of attending college for me was how I was going to afford it because I didn't have papers at the time and there was no DACA, there was no laws that would give financial aid to students like me. It was just where I, I was going to pay it. But since I was running cross country and track, I was able to get some athletic uh, scholarships uh, as well as some academic uh, scholarships. Well, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty awesome. And how do, you, how do you manage to, well, we already answered that. How do you manage to go to college? Do they manage to cover most of the college part or do you have to put some of your money out of your own pocket? For community college, they paid most of it. Um, I would have to pay maybe the books, if anything. For university level, they did pay for everything. So how did that happen? Uh, so what happened is that I ran for community college for about two years. Um, I was able to excel, you know, and I, I was known. However, after two years of attending community college, since still there was no loss who would help financially for people like me, um, no coach was able to help me. Because if they wanted to help me, they would have to pay more than just a regular uh, U.S. citizen who can apply for financial aid. So after two years, I kind of, you could say, gave up the, the dream of becoming a, a student athlete at the university level. But and I, I kept going to community college and I, you know, fun jobs here and there until after a year that happened in 2013, one professor from Hawaii Pacific University contacted me and offered me a scholarship for athletics and, and academics. Well, how was that experience for you? That was amazing. I mean, I, after, you know, you, you've been working so hard for so long and you don't seem to be rewarded for it because uh, I got to this country, my, my coach told me, look, you have a talent. And if you try really hard, you have good grades, you'll get it. But that's no guarantee. It's just like everybody else, you know, you can work really hard and you still don't get it. So I worked really hard and after those five years, it seems like I wasn't going to get it. But then this guy comes out of nowhere and here, here it is, you know, the dream come true. Well, congratulations. I think it's pretty awesome and that's the part that I wanted people to hear precisely. Is that uh, a lot of times we use several excuses and really they are just excuses of what it can and cannot be done and we forget that we do live in the United States, we do live in California, and we do live in the city of LA and a lot of people just use excuses not to be able to you know, grow and continue to be more and more. And we know that you didn't stop right there. So how did the idea about starting your own business come about? Uh, so after attending Hawaii Pacific, I graduated and I started working as an accountant here in LA. So I decided to go for my master's degree. So I attended Woodbury University and after two years of studying, I entered a business plan competition and I got third place. And at the same time, uh, one of the judges was very interested in my business. So he decided to invest and help me and endorse my business. So that was like the last push I needed. We, it was sometimes we, we do certain things that we don't know how much of an impact or how important it could be for other people. Recently, I got invited by the SBA to do precisely just that. 
Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be one of the judges and some of the students are gonna come forward and they can explain you know, the idea of a business and if we believe they actually could work, we would recommend the SBA to actually give them a, you know, a, a loan for, to start their business. So it's pretty awesome to see some of you actually benefited and grew and continue to continue to be more and more each time you know, after you got that experience. So I think it's pretty amazing. So what are some of your future plans? What would you like to do in the future or? In the future, I want my business to grow to the point that I can make an impact in the community. I want to go to law school next year for the same reason. I want to be able to teach people, you know, I mean, consult people uh, in legal matters and as well as businesses so I can help them grow uh, in the long term. Wow, that's pretty awesome, man. Well, we already had a talk and I already told you I think it would be a great idea. We would love to have you come back and, you know, participate in everything that we do in the chamber. I think a lot of people can benefit from, you know, your services and from the experience that you have, your background that you have, as well as inspire other people to do a lot, lot more. So we wish you all the luck and we'll be more than happy to support you and, and anything that we can, you know, we'll be there and we would definitely would like to see you come back, you know, and see your business grow, continue to grow by the age that you are, he's only 28. I think by the age that you are, to be able to accomplish so much is simply mind-blowing to see. 28, came in into the United States, 15 years old, without anybody to support you, anybody to, you know, to back you up and to be able to say, I speak three languages, I graduated from the university and I own my own business. Wow, I think it's really mind-blowing and I think that's the part where we connected that I feel like we have a lot in common, you know, and we have, you know, pushed the limit to the highest that we can. And I still think I got a lot more to go myself and I do definitely wish it for you to continue as well. So that in the future, we also have another lawyer in the chamber. Okay, thank you. Really Welcome. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.